Hello, everyone. Welcome to From Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Daniel Goodemont, and over there, John Lundeski. How's everything going, John? Good. Tired. Yeah. <laughs> Sore. Yeah. Got me yelling at Mother Nature. Stop raining. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get rain all year. For the last three days, it's just been like, ah. <laughs> so um, just a little personal note for us. But before we get into our show, which is why you're here, please take a second to check out our sponsor, Hockey Locker, 202 West Howard Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You can call them at 414-800-7585 or visit their website at hockeylockermilwaukee.com. Today, the Nashville Predators took on the Tampa Bay Lightning. Unlike tomorrow, where the Nashville Predators will take on the Nashville Predators. Hmm. Um, that's a whole different thing. But it's our first recap of the year. If you're wondering why we weren't here the last game, um, well, we had some tech issues to the point where it frustrated us to where we were just like, we're making graphics. Yeah. And we're not dealing with that. After getting, it's like um, losing horribly and then things just getting worse gradually. Right. So it, it just makes it very difficult. Um, in the first period, um, there was no scoring. Uh, Austin Watson and uh, Michael McCarron had a, a fight. Uh, Austin Watson comes away with a W. Uh, Austin Watson is currently with the uh, Tampa Bay Lightning. Former first-round draft pick drafted 15th overall by the Nashville Predators in 2010. If I remember correctly. I'm hoping I remember correctly. Normally, I'm the guru. <laughs> uh, Eighteenth overall in twenty ten. So I was right in the same year, and I was within three picks. Yep. Hey, uh, hey, I'm not gonna complain about being close. <laughs> <laughs> All right. In the second, uh, Groshev scores with an assist from Robert and Thompson. That was on the power play. Just so you want to know, you're gonna hear a lot of that. That was in the second. It was a wrist shot. Um, then in the third, um. At the 416 mark on a snapshot, which is not a slap shot, but it's just kind of one of those weird things. Um, it, it's not a slap shot, but not a wrist shot. It's like yeah. a pedal. Um, that was scored on the power play with an assist from Barry and Forsberg. Um, then in overtime, uh, Tyler Mott scores with an assist from Isamont and Thompson. Isamont's first, Thompson's second. Um, this that was scored on the power play in overtime. Uh, the shot on that one is a is a bat, which is a bat. Um, that means it was tipped or uh, swung at in midair <laughs> and went in. So, um, Preds lose again. Um, I know that that's been a kind of kind of theme for the uh preseason but uh i'd rather get the losses out of the way while they don't count right <laughs> let's figure out what all our stuff is um like i was saying there's a lot of a lot of prospects um that are on the move right so um we have been away for so quite some time uh, your goaltenders in this game were for the Lightning starting the well, he played the whole game. Uh, it was um Tompkins, the former uh Rockford goalie. Okay. He stopped 30 of 31, giving up one on the power play with a point nine six eight. Um they split time in Nashville with Saros and Yarrow. Um, Yarrow stopped a uh, ten of eleven, and Sorrow stopped sixteen of seventeen. Both of them have the same percentage over nine. Yeah, I'm not complaining. Both gave up a goal on the power play. 
Our penalty kill needs to be a little better. We'll work on that in time. Um, I've got a little bit of stuff that I could... work on from uh, here out, but uh, just give me a split second here while I get to it. Um, all righty. Uh, there's been a few, um, as other teams around the leagues are getting going. Uh-oh. Whoops. <laughs> Um, we're gonna, we'll get into this, but let's start here. Um, so we're going to do a little slide of in the system. We're going to slide this one into the, our first one into, in at this point, uh, seven players out of 42 have played games so far. Um, college hockey doesn't pick up for a little while. Um, probably about another month or so. Um, but the KHL and and Swedish and Finnish leagues are well underway. Uh, some of them have six games played already. Um, Simon Nack, uh, hockey club Davos in the National League in Switzerland, he has four assists in six games. Uh, Felix Nelson, uh, we picked him up in the most recent draft. Uh, he was drafted in the second round 43rd overall um he has a goal in us assisted his under 20 league uh in the under 20 league he's also played four games in the men's league uh Vladislav Yurmenko is not having a good year so far um as he is four games in with one point but uh he has been having issues on the defensive side of his game. Uh, Kasper Kulunumi, uh defenseman for Tapera. Um, so anytime I see Tapera on TV, I'm definitely going to be checking them out. Uh, he has two games or five games played, uh, one assist. Uh, Jesse Kieskinen, he has five games played, one assist, has not played in the under-20 league. Uh, Simeon Chishikov, he is in the KHL. Don't expect to see him over here for another three years as he re-signed with Avangar Ominsk in the KHL. Anton Olesen for Skolaftia Sweden AIK, he's got four games played with a minus one. Chishikov is a minus two, by the way, in those two games. Uh, Kiskinen, he is a minus four. Um, Kulonomi is a plus two. Uh, Yuramenko is a plus three. Ed Dak is a plus five. Uh, Felix Nielsen has a even plus minus. Um, but we'll see where we're at. We're going to see where this goes because yep. it's going to get very, very chaotic. So I kind of wanted to get a start on it quicker than we could think of, as well as two goalies have played already. Uh, Konstantin Volkov of uh, Dynamo Moscow of KHL. He has three games played with a 2.67 goals against average and a 0.918 save percentage. Uh, Yuha Gatkola. Get get um, he's got four games played with a 2.94 goals against average and a 0.9, or I'm sorry, 0. 0.868 save percentage. He plays for Kalpa of Liga. Um, it, I am interested in in our in the system. Uh, from how this season will look, right um, now, the Preds have cut down their roster quite a bit. Um, uh, it 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 will be interesting to see how their roster shapes out. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of places and not a lot of spots. Right. And. It's it's looking like it's going to be a track meet towards the end. Um, don't be surprised if you don't see some guys moving around. If not, see some guys traded for a younger prospect at some point in time. Right. Um, especially if, if Nashville starts losing. 
If if Nashville starts tanking, don't be surprised if they don't start selling off everything. Right. And one of the big pieces this year is going to be Yarrow. For the Admirals and the Preds. I think that Saros is the most movable piece that Nashville has. Yeah. I'm not saying that I like the idea of movement. Right. <laughs> I'm saying that he is the most movable piece. Right. And he, has a, he has another year of control. He's at a manageable contract. Um, and he's not going to cost you a fortune. Yeah. Um, to resign. He's a team first guy. <clears throat> oh, I'm so sorry, but it is 11 o'clock here. So <laughs> we're working a little late tonight. <laughs> so, um, beyond that, um, you know, me, uh, just a little inside note on what me and John have been talking about right lately when it comes to hockey. Um, there's a couple things. Um, one, like, it's funny, like, as we get older, we enjoy the smells of the arena. Mm -hmm. Like, it, once you get down by the ice, you can smell the ice. Because ice has a distinct smell for hockey ice. Hockey ice has a smell over, like, go walk up to, like, an icicle and smell it. It has a smell. You know? So, ice, in, in that setting, you when you first walk in, like, when we when I go to preseason, I don't think John's going to go. Mm. Um... Yeah, we're going to definitely, you know, and then a uh, home opener and uh, um, my kid will be there the the weekend after uh, with uh, his uh, um, Cub Scouts. So it'll be nice. And, you know, um, so if you see me a lot less over the next couple years, it's because my kids are Cub Scouts and I'm camping. And thanks, John. <laughs> <laughs> Just ahead of time already. Thank you. Because <laughs> you know, I'm gonna have stuff in the winter that I'm gonna be doing with my kids and and I'm a very proactive parent and, uh, and that comes first. So um uh, just something about me that's changed over the last year. Um I got I wanna leave my kids in a better position than I'm I'm currently in. <laughs> um so uh on another note uh what do we got else we got we got coming up uh we've got the showcase tomorrow coverage on that is no idea <laughs> well if you see us or it's because we saw it if you don't see us it's it all depends on what happens there um but moving forward uh it does look like uh we've got a lot going forward i also want to ahead of our season thank our wives for putting up with our crap this year again <laughs> um there are times we I, I hate saying this i'm gonna openly admit it for me there are times where i come on this camera and I look like this when I feel like this. And um, as much as John and me like to put on a smile, there are going to be just be some days where we can't. You know, um, I know there's been shows where I just come in. This is from Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Daniel. <laughs> I'm going to kill this team. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. You're going to read fan kills 23 players. Not literally. I would never harm a, a single player or person or anything like that. It's a uh, figurative uh, laughing point, as I use. Um, you hear it from coaches all the time where it's like, if I could kill you, I would, kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, if it didn't cost me my life, I would... <laughs> You know, that's the I, I've heard coaches say that to like even to me when I was the, a kid. You know, you're horrible, you're bad, you you stink. <laughs> it, it, it just toughens you up in a sense, but you know, um, how many times your parents yell at you yell, 
oh, I'm gonna kill that kid. <laughs> you know, it's just it's just a thing, a figurative speech. Um, but no, uh, it's just I feel like over this year I want to take more of an analytic side and a more approach to the game. Um this game obviously had its points. Uh, there was the back and forth. It was very wide open in the in the first period. Very, 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 very wide open. There was a lot, a lot of passing. There was a lot of open ice. Um, this team does look to play with tempo. Yeah. It doesn't look like they get hemmed in very often unless they're on the penalty kill. Then they can't get out of their own way. Nobody was forechecking in the overtime. And I think that was just guys that played all game already are just tanked. Pushing. Right. They're, you, you're already pushing overtime and they're just tanked. You know, and that's part of just building up the stamina. You got to have it. And, you know, um, I want to see the power play get better. I mean, they had seven opportunities on the power play and only capitalized once. Yeah. Um, Little things that they'll get better on throughout the course of the season, you know. They had 12 hits to their 21, uh, 31, 35 block shots for Tampa Bay compared to the Nashville's 20. Um, penalty minutes, Tampa definitely got that. Um, you know, they beat them in the face-offs, which was a good thing. Um in the face-off circle, uh, your guy who had the best night, Glass, at 69.2%, and then McCarran at 66.7%. Um, you know, uh, Barry, Yossi, yeah, Barry and Yossi both had over 20 minutes of ice time. Uh, O'Reilly had 23 minutes of ice time. Forsberg had 22 minutes of ice time. You know, good to see your veterans out there. McDonough had 19 point or 19 minutes, 20 seconds. Doug Izzo had 19 minutes, 22 seconds. Yeah. Luke Shen had 19 minutes, 30 seconds. And then Statsy had 15 minutes, 10 seconds. Your three stars of the game. First star of the game was, was uh, Tompkins. Second star of the game was Mott. And third star of the game was Tommy Novak. Your head coach for Nashville is Andrew Burdett. Assistant, uh, well, we don't know the assistant coaches. They don't have one here. Well, darn. All right. Tampa's head coach is John Cooper. And your referees were Frederick LaCour and Peter McDougall. Uh, lines persons. That's interesting. Um, and Jonathan Deschamps and Dan Kelly. I guess you would have to say that because linesmen and their female lines women. So, yeah, I guess you'd have to say lines persons, but I don't think that would be the word that comes to mind. Um, I, I, I do sit here and wonder what our team's going to look like. Yeah. I, I am very curious to that part. Um, not just for us, but for Nashville as well, because it'll tell us a lot more of who needs work and to work on what. Yeah. Oops. All righty. Um, also wanted to say a uh, quick one more thing. Uh, I, I know he watches and 
it's before midnight, so I'm going to do it anyway. Hey, uh, so uh, over there at TNT Racing, I wanted to say a big happy birthday to Marty Take It. So, Marty, happy birthday, buddy. Um, and also, thank you to all our fans who have stuck with us all, su all summer. And now, well, hopefully you all come back. <laughs> Um, but the rest of you come back, but ah, this is our first show. It's a mess. I gave some mental health advice. Um, I told you what not to scream at your children by admitting I scream it at my children. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, you know, uh, and all in all, I'm I'm in it to have fun. Um, the minute I stop having fun, I'm gonna I'm done. <laughs> So uh, I'm I'm in it for fun, and so uh, yet again this year motto, just have fun. <laughs> <laughs>